All right, boys and girls. Uh, last we left off, Jeremy's dragon, Tiamat, had crawled up onto the uh, the front of the school or the front of the, the classroom and breathed on the art teacher's foot until he jumped up and down and took off his shoe because his foot was so hot. And he did that because Jeremy was angry at him. So let's read the next chapter. Here we go. Chapter 10, The Hatchers. I can't believe it, said Specimen, as they trudged home that afternoon. We've been waiting six years to win that contest. I know, said Jeremy glumly. He also knew that unless he was willing to face Mr. Kravitz, there was no chance for either of them to enter. The idea was appalling. That means he didn't want to do it. If he did confess, what was he going to say when Mr. Kravitz asked, as he was bound to, how Jeremy had done it? Honesty might not or might be the best policy, thought Jeremy, but it's kind of tough when the truth is somewhat thing that no one will believe. Tiamat wheeled overhead, flew around overhead, sending occasional messages of concern. She stayed with them the same way a puppy would, first sprinting ahead, then falling back to investigate something, circling around them, eager to play. Her antics made it hard to pay attention to Specimen. Why can't Spes see the dragon, thought Jeremy, miserably, instead of Mary Lou. His thoughts were interrupted by a wave of gold washing through his head. Looking up, he saw Tiamat wheeling through the sky, looking like a string of rubies in the sunshine. Jeremy loved the sight, but it also troubled him. He had a feeling that dragons didn't really belong in this world anymore. Or did they? If Tiamat was invisible to almost everyone else, was it possible there were other dragons, ones that he couldn't see? For a moment, the idea that the world might be filled with invisible wonders filled his head. Who knew how many amazing things were out there, unknown, waiting to be discovered? What you looking at? asked Specimen. Just thinking, said Jeremy. You've been doing a lot. You've been doing that a lot lately. Want to come in and have something to eat? Before Jeremy could answer, Specimen smacked himself in the head and said, I've got something that belongs to you. What? A book. I accidentally brought it home with some of my art stuff that day I got mad at you. It looks good, if you like that kind of stuff. What book? asked Jeremy, hardly daring to hope. Specimen shrugged. Something about disappearing dragons? Jeremy couldn't believe it. Miss Priest's book had been here all along. He didn't know whether to shout with relief or clobber Specimen for causing him so much worry. I really can't say, stay, he said, which was more than true, considering the fact that he had a loose dragon to keep an eye on. But I need that book. Specimen looked hurt. Jeremy continued home, clutching Miss Priest's book to his chest. He couldn't believe it had been in Specimen's room all this time. He couldn't wait to get home and read it. A few blocks past Specimen's house, he heard a yowl from the bushes beside him. He paused. The yowl came again. It sounded like a cat in pain. Plunging through the leaves, Jeremy cried out in shock. There, under the tree, was Fat Pete. His legs had been tied together, front leg to front leg, back leg to back leg, and he was hopping about trying to escape his tormentor, Freddy the Frog Killer, who was poking at him with a stick and laughing hysterically. Boy, Freddy the Frog Killer just does not seem like a, a good citizen. You stop that, cried Jeremy. Freddy turned around, his cheeks were red, and Jeremy could tell he was angry at being caught in his nasty game. Who's going to make me? He snarled. Just stop it, said Jeremy, painfully aware that he was too small to make Freddy do anything. To his amazement, Freddy did stop. 
You're such a jerk, Thatcher, he sneered, throwing down the stick. He brushed past Jeremy toward the sidewalk. Boy, that Freddy, he doesn't seem like somebody I'd want to be with. I'd want to hang out with. Jeremy held his breath until Freddy was past him. He was just about to breathe out when a ferocious kick caught him in the rear and sent him sprawling face first into the dirt. A jerk, repeated Freddy. Also, a... He didn't have much time to finish explaining what Jeremy was because Tiamat attacked. It would have been worked better if Freddy had been able to see her. Then her claws, her jaws, her very strangeness might have frightened him into backing away. As it was, he only felt something unknown land on his chest and start to claw at him. Screaming, he flailed his arms flailed, waved them around. He flailed his arms in front of him. The frantic action knocked the little dragon into a bush. Red swirls of pain streamed through Jeremy's brain. Tiamat, he cried in horror. Freddy's face was white. You're weird, Thatcher, he screamed just before he turned and ran. Jeremy groaned and pulled himself to his feet. Fat Pete howled, but Jeremy walked past him. Except for his dignity, the bound cat was unharmed. Tiamat was, however, was caught in the branches of the thorny bush, and her struggles to escape were only making the situation worse. Stop, thought Jeremy. Let me help you. Tiamat panted with exertion, her hot breath withering the leaves around her. Stop, thought Jeremy again. You're going to hurt yourself. She slowed her struggles, working carefully. Jeremy extracted her from the bush. Though the thorns had scraped her wings, they were leathery and too tough to be e easily pierced. Nasty, she thought, sending pictures of both Freddy and the bush. Jeremy couldn't have agreed more. With Tiamat perched on his shoulder, he untied Pete, who scratched him for his efforts. Uh, Jeremy felt a blaze of anger. Immediately, Tiamat tensed her legs as if to launch herself at the cat. No, he thought. Tiamat sent her question feeling. He tried to explain that Pete was just lashing out because he was angry. He wasn't sure he got the point across, but it gave Pete time to get away. Uh, remember, boys and girls, when at the beginning, when dad's, his dad said, Jeremy's dad said, there's no point in getting mad at a cat for being a cat. Rather than going into the house, Jeremy headed for his father's office. Hold still, he thought to Tiamat. I want to get something to put on your wings. The dragon sent back a message of agreement. Dr. Thatcher whistled when his son walked through the door. What happened to you? He asked, you look like you've been dancing with Fat Pete. Jeremy blinked in astonishment. Could his father possibly know what had just happened? Well, what do you mean? He asked nervously. Those scratches, thought Dr. Thatcher. I hope Mary Lou didn't do that to you. Jeremy put his hand to his cheek. He had been so worried about Tiamat and Fat Pete that he hadn't noticed what had happened to his own face when he fell. Do you want some ointment for... Dr. Thatcher's voice trailed off. He looked at Jeremy and blinked. Dad? Dr. Thatcher shook his head. I've been working too hard, he said, rubbing a hand across his eyes. Jeremy sighed. For a moment, he thought his father had started to see Tiamat. Life would be so much easier if he knew about her. For a moment, he considered trying to tell his father, but he remembered Mr. Eliv's letter. By accepting the dragon, he had accepted a vow of secrecy. A vow is a very, very important promise. Let me know, or let me get those cleaned up, said Dr. Thatcher, pointing to the scratches on Jeremy's face. Then I want to put some ointment on them. Only, don't tell your mother. She doesn't know she doesn't like it when I use animal medicine on you, even if it is perfectly good. Jeremy sighed. One more secret to keep. 
Is this stuff good for all or for any animal? He asked his, as his father smeared the salve on his scratches. All-purpose antiseptic, said Dr. Thatcher. Guaranteed to zap germs before they can get a foothold. Can I have some extra? asked Jeremy. Dr. Thatcher hesitated. Sure, he said staring again at the place where Tiamat perched on Jeremy's shoulder. He closed his eyes, then opened them. Take all you want. I'm going to pause right there. What do you think, boys and girls? Why do you think Dad was acting so funny? Do you think Dad was maybe being able to see... Uh, Maybe if he couldn't see the whole dragon, maybe he started to see an outline of the dragon. I don't know. I think I think the way that he acted versus the way that the mom acted are completely different. And I wonder, I wonder if uh, we're going to be able to, to find out the answer to that question before the end of the book. All right. Well, I'll read some more of this later. I hope you're all having a great day.